So uh, O.J. Simpson passed away today, and um, you got a lot of people who are rejoicing because this man is gone, and they are um, Christian folk. Even basically, they they saying hell is welcoming him and welcoming him, and he deserved it. And you know, it's just unfortunate, and um, you know, it doesn't. <laughs> it should not. Um, get past anyone that this is a black man, a prominent black man, a, 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 a successful black man in his career. He played for the Buffalo Bills for multiple seasons, over 12 seasons, won the Heisman Trophy. And uh, before his um, criminal trial back in 1994 when he was arrested or before the criminal trial in 95, he was a very popular well like athlete and it wasn't until after he was arrested for the death of Ron Goldman and um Nicole Brown Simpson, his wife at the, or ex wife at the time. He was pretty popular. Now, um for you guys who don't know, you know, nineteen ninety five was a long time ago, almost thirty years. But because created so much division because it created so much uh racial animosity it's one of those things that everybody remembers you know the time period basically you know for decades centuries even um black people have been prosecuted wrongfully by the police and there was absolutely nothing you could do about it and uh, we thought this was just going to be another case of the Los Angeles Police Department, who had a horrible reputation at the time. And they were known for doing crooked things. They were being sued. Uh, there was an incident related to the, uh, they call it the Rampart District uh, corruption case. Even now, uh, you have L.A. sheriffs who are members of gangs. I mean, they have their own in-house gangs. And so even now they're, they don't have the best reputation. But back then it was worse because you didn't have cell phones. The media was definitely biased against the black community. And even though O.J. had pretty much separated himself from the black community, married himself a white woman, moved to Brentwood, and he was living in that, that world, you know, he was still a black man. And they um, prosecuted him like he was a black man. I guess you could say he got his... Uh, wake up call, if you will. But nevertheless, uh, they, at the time of the trial, it was very divisive. You have, you know, for the most part, and I hate to generalize this, but you had white people on one side, black people on another side. And um, so when he was acquitted, you know, it created a great division. It was literally, they had cameras placed in rooms filled with uh, people of different ethnicities. And you can see when the acquittal came down, the black people cheered, and the white people literally were sobbing. They had um, their faces melted. And it just showed you just how divisive or just what race relations were like, and people were upset. Even to this day, nearly 30 years later, you know, or really 30 years later, uh, two months shy of 30 years, people... Um, you know, still swear up and down he did it, even though he was acquitted by a jury of his peers. Now, the thing about the case that you have to understand is that um, he had Johnny Cochran, and he also had Alan Dershowitz. He had Barry Sheck. Uh, he had Bob Shapiro. Um, and these this was considered the dream team. Basically, Barry Sheck unraveled the, 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 the county, the district attorney's, uh, DNA case, and Johnny Cochran, uh, who's a black lawyer, by the way, if you guys don't know him, he he just challenged, he ate the um, ate the timeline that the district attorneys had put forth. He ate it up. He just destroyed it. Um, and so there was reasonable doubt that that's it. There there was reasonable doubt that OJ committed these crimes. Now. Even at that time, people questioned, you know, whether or not he could have done it. But the media machine jumped into place, 
And uh, even if you did not believe he was guilty, you know, over the past 30 years, they've convinced you that he's guilty. I don't think O.J. is guilty. I never thought he was guilty. Um, you know, when I see this 70, uh, I mean, 40-something-year-old man at that time, you killed two people, Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson, and neither one of them ran away. He was paying the woman $27,500 a month. The allegations were that she was on drugs. Uh, the allegations were that uh, Mr. Ron Goldman Jr. Uh, was working at a uh, bar as a waiter. Actually, he was working at a bar as a waiter. I believe it was. It starts with an M. Uh, I don't know the name of it right now, but you can look it up. And, uh, you know, the rumor is that there was some sort of drug debt. And um, I guess they thought O.J. was going to pay it off for her because, you know, allegedly she had a habit, and I think her, her one of her friends was going to testify to that, but they didn't. Um, she had a habit. She had a drug debt. Uh, Ron Goldman Jr. somehow was mixed up in it. Either way, they showed up at her house to collect or they showed up at her house for retribution, and they uh, literally iced her. You know, they literally, uh, you know, they, they they unalived both Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson. And I don't think O.J. had the phys physicality to do that. Remember, Ron Goldman is 25 years old. O.J. Simpson, what is he, 40-something uh, years old? I don't see how one person can beat up two people and, and, and nobody really hear it. it. To me, it always seemed like a two-person job. And then when you factor in the fact there was others who may have had, may have been motivated to uh, unalive these two people, then you know I never put I, I never I, I never put any real account into OJ's uh, murder. I always thought it was made up. I always thought this is just another black man being persecuted by the judicial system that has for decades persecuted black men. Remember, we're talking about the height of the gang epidemic and even if you weren't in the gang you could still get prosecuted even if you had nothing to do with drugs or any criminal activity you, you still could end up in jail and so now here we are we got a black man fighting for his life and he wins and so it wasn't that black people were happy that OJ got away with a crime it wasn't that we thought he actually killed Nicole Brown, uh, unalived, excuse me, you know, right? I, it's not that we that, that we thought he did it. It's that we finally see that a black man can get justice. Now, of course, the media says, well, oh, it's because he was rich and they favored him and he could afford lawyers. Yeah, but, you know, for the most part, the judicial system, it always sees black men especially as guilty as from being arrested. You're already guilty. And so now here we are. We got a black man who actually got a trial because he could afford to pay for what normally is not afforded to black men, and that is competent lawyers who, is, who are experienced. And, you know, and the fact that we saw Johnny Cochran um, basically take center stage and really, you know, and help his brother get free. That was even more motivation. It, it let me know the power of the oratory, the power of knowing the system, and what hard work and dedication can do. Because to be able to get a black man off of criminal charges where he's allegedly have unalived two white people, that in itself is a miracle. You know, they put black men in jail who just happened to be there at the time the crime happened, much less uh, someone who is an ex-wife and you know, there, there's an there, there's that um, idea that he he has some motivation. So it was just it was it was just a uh, it was just a very interesting and phenomenal trial, and that's why we still are dealing with the the uh, I guess the, we're in the wake of that trial thirty years later, and as he's passed on. You know, a, a lot of people feel like justice was never served. 
Yes, he did go to jail for eight years for some sort of nine years for some alleged armed robbery. And a lot of people think that was the get back. The judicial system had it out for him because, you know, the judicial system, i.e., the people that run the judicial system, i.e., you know, the, the, the racist amongst us, the white supremacists, they don't want to take any L's. And to them, O.J. Simpson won. And the reason he won is because he got a chance to live a long life. He didn't die in a, in a jail cell somewhere. He he died surrounded by his family and loved ones. And they wanted him to die miserably. They wanted him to be unhappy. They wanted him to suffer. The idea that he would date this white woman, and then how dare he allow something to happen to her, you know, even if it wasn't had, he had nothing to do with it. And so that's the way they look at it, you know, and, and, and it still strikes a chord with a lot of people. So, those of you guys who are under the age of 30 and you don't know what, what the big deal is, or even folks who are, you know, even if you're in your early 40s, you may not really feel or understand truly what O.J. Simpson's case did to America. Uh, it, it divided America. It showed us that we do not live in a uh, colorless society, that people are still as tribal as they always were, the racism still exist as if, as if we didn't already know that, um, and that America's favorite sport is annihilating and assassinating the character of black men. No matter how rich you are, no matter how famous you are, how popular you are, how handsome you are, because O.J. was a handsome man when he was young, always had been, always had the ladies, always had the smile. Uh, he was even featured in Roots, the movie Roots. Um, you know, and, and for the most part, you know, he was like a shining prince until he wasn't. And boy, when he wasn't, I mean, they, they never let up. I mean, they never let up on OJ, but he won. He won in the end because he was able to die, uh, as a, uh, as an old man and under some covers, I'm sure, surrounded by his family. And that bothers a lot of people because they wanted to punish him. They wanted to, they, they wanted to punish him. And so, um, you know, and, and even if you consider the Goldman family, you know, they they never really collected much on their civil judgment. And just so we can di differentiate, the burden of proof in a criminal trial where the state is trying to put someone or take someone's freedom away is a different burden than a civil trial, okay? So beyond a reasonable doubt means that there's, uh, you know, if if the defense counsel can punch holes in the state's case, right, then you get off. You're, you're, you haven't been proved guilty, and therefore, by default, you're innocent. It was at this time, and, and when O.J. was found guilty, they 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 would they would then say oh well it's not that the jury found him not guilty <laughs> or it's not that they it, they didn't find him innocent they just didn't find him guilty so it was their way of of, of still winning you know it was, it was it was the media's way of of still achieving the goal of proving this man was guilty even though the jury even though you're presumed innocent or you're you're innocent until proven guilty so had he not been proved guilty guess what. He's innocent, but oh no, the rules change because it just left a bad taste in the mouth. So they had to say that, and of course, it appeals to a certain group of people who uh, who who wanted to convict the man beforehand. Of course, you know, because a lot of people, if if you're black, if you're a man, you're already guilty, guilty, guilty upon being arrested. But moving to the civil trial, all you have to do is prove by preponderance of an evi uh, of evidence. So let's say you're on the 49-yard line. All you got to do is get to the 51-yard line. Better yet, you're on the 50-yard line, and all you got to get to is the 51-yard line. And you can do that with circumstantial evidence. There's a lot of other uh, evidence that could be admitted. Um, you don't have the scrutiny that you would have uh, in, in a case involving uh, a state prosecuting, the government prosecuting someone and try to take their freedom. It's purposely a lot more lax to prove a civil trial. So they proved him criminally liable or, 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 or negligent uh, in a civil trial. 
And for the past 30 years, the Goldman family has been trying to collect on that judgment, and they've gotten very little of that judgment. They got little to nothing. OJ moved to Florida. Florida did not allow. They don't allow you to collect on the retirement. So OJ is just in Florida golfing, you know, and he did spend some time in the penitentiary in Nevada, and people thought he was going to pass away while in jail, but it looked like, he was fine. He came out. Pretty much all he did was golf. Every now and then you see him pop up on Twitter and, and have a few things to say, but now known as X. But for the most part, he kept to himself. He never was able to enter back into the spotlight. You know, that was over. Um, but, you know, he, he pretty much lived his life he won. Now, the thing I want to address is this. Why is this such a big deal? Because as I recall, and what do I mean by that? In 1994, if I recall, there were about 845 unalivements in L.A. County. A vast majority of those people were black and brown. A lot of them died gruesomely. Remind you, mind you, we're talking about the gang capital of America at the time. We're talking about what Chicago is uh, now is what, South Central L.A., Compton, and Watts, and, 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 and East L.A. was, and, and, and other parts of L.A. were uh, were then. So why is it that these two people who died almost 30 years ago of gruesome death, why is, why, why, is their li- why are their lives so important? What about the other 843 people that died that we don't even mention? Why is it? Is it because a black man allegedly did it? Is it because they're white people? Why Why the sensationalism? Why do we keep digging these people up out of the grave and putting them up front and, and saying this man did it? Why, why? Why do we do that? What about the innocent children who died, the nameless innocent children? The truth is the only reason we talk about it because it's associated with celebrity. And unfortunately, I find that Americans have a morbid obsession with death and how people die, especially when you wrap that in the sensationalism of Hollywood and and wealth and popularity in society. The truth is um, there are people who die all the time, and we want to find someone to blame, and we lash out against people like O.J., because we're truthfully angry with them. And, and the reason is we can be angry with them is because we're angry with our own lives, in my opinion. And so you lash out at the rich, you lash out at the successful. And any time you're presented with an opportunity to speak negatively about someone who you proclaim to admire for their success, you will. Like most Americans, we want to be rich, we want to be successful, but then we want to, we hate the rich. This is where we are. We hate the rich, but we want to be rich. That's a schism. That is a, it's, 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 it's almost schizophrenic. It's delusional. You hate the rich, but you want to be rich. You hate the successful. You hate on the successful. You make up rumors about people, but you want to be successful. It's odd. It's an oddity. Very odd. But that's the only reason that we still talk about Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson, oh, we do it for the family. What about those other 843 people that died in L.A. County? They had families, too. They still go to the mortuary were they, and, and visit their family. Well, they died in such a gruesome way. Have you not seen what happens to a person when they get shot up and unalive during a drive-by shooting? Uh, this is as gruesome. But one thing I won't do is I'm not going to take uh I'm not going to uh pile on. I'm not going to use participate in the pylon and the destroying of another black man's character, especially one who's been proven not guilty of a criminal act when there are definitely viable options as to what really happened to these people. Now, the truth is a lot of these people who are still blaming O.J., either they're stupid or uh, 
they are tied in <laughs> with the people who really did it, and they know better. I'm sure that part of the reason that O.J. Simpson didn't speak on it or didn't tell, even if he did know, is because the people that did it would do it to him, too, theoretically, if you believe that uh, what the law said and that he's not guilty. Somebody else did it. Why aren't we looking for the somebody else that did it? Uh, and I think that there's an incentive for people not to look for somebody else that did it. Number one, the people that know don't want to get involved because they know that the people who did Ron Goldman uh, and, and, and Nicole Brown Simpson would come after them. There's no statute of limitations on murder. Bottom line is the jury found him not guilty. Yeah, he had excellent representation, but there are a lot of people who had excellent representation. Look at Bill Cosby. He had excellent representation. You don't think a man who's worth $400 million can afford the best lawyers in Pennsylvania? He did, of course. But what about if he just wasn't guilty and the jury determined that the DNA evidence was trash, that the timeline was trash, and that's why it was picked apart, and that it wasn't possible for him to do it. There was a reasonable doubt. All the other times we rely on the jury. But now, not so much. But anyway, I'm not going to pile on. Like I said, I thought it was interesting. There's a lot we could discuss on this case. I look forward to checking.